Today, the River Severn is going to show us all how daft this globe Earth theory really is. As if we didn't already know. <laughs> this is really hard work. Even though it's the end of summer, the ground up on this moorland is still pretty soggy. My surroundings might look pretty anonymous, but the spot where I'm standing now is actually the source for the mighty River Severn, the longest river in Britain. And a river I'm very familiar with as it ends actually in the channel there, and I've been going to the channel since the 70s. Let's get some information on the river, bear with me. Let's get some basic stats regarding the River Severn from Wiki here. The River Severn, at 220 miles long, is the longest river in Great Britain. It rises from the Cambrian Mountains in Mid Wales, at an altitude of 2,001 feet. Bear with me. It's got an image showing the path of the river, starting obviously at the source, Plinlimon. Goes up, around, comes all the way down and ends at Seven Beach where essentially the mouth um, of the river or the official end of the river is at the second Seven Crossing which is at Seven Beach. Okay. So now I've got the source, the source's altitude and of course the end of the river. But rather than follow the river's route, I want to know what the distance is from the source to the mouth of the river as the crow flies and it turns out it's 78 miles as the crow flies from the source of the river in Wales to the mouth of the river, the end of the river in, in, uh, at Seven Beach, okay? Now I've got my 78 mile figure as the crow flies between the two points of reference, the source of the river and of course the mouth of the river, I'm now going to calculate how much curvature, according to the globe maths, there is or should be between those two points of reference. For example, let's say I'm stood at the mouth of the river at sea level, I want to know how much curvature there is between myself at the mouth of the river and the source of the river 78 miles away. And I calculate and I get a figure of 4,056 feet of curvature or drop over that distance, which is quite a lot of curvature. Now remember, we're told wherever we are in relation to the globe, we're on top of the globe and everywhere going away from us is bending down in all directions, essentially curving down and away from us. Now that works great when we're on the source of a river, I up high. The river's running downhill from the source to the mouth and that all works lovely and dandy. Problem is, when we reverse the roles and I go to the mouth of the river rather than the source, we can see the obvious problem. The globe now starts to fail dramatically. Remember, the curvature between the two points of reference was over 4,000 feet. So essentially, 78 miles away, sea level is 4,000 feet below me when I'm stood at the mouth of the river. We can add 2,000 feet for the height of the source of the river. But essentially, the source of the river is still going to be 2,000 feet below my feet. Essentially, the river's now going to have to run uphill towards the mouth of the river. If the earth was a bull and I'm stood at the mouth of the river, and of course they tell us when we're, wherever we're stood, we're on the top of the bull and it bends and curves away from us in all directions. Great, but it fails dramatically when we're dealing with rivers. Works when we're stood at the top, but when we're stood at the mouth of the river, you can see from the diagram and of course the globe mathematics, we have an obvious fail, an obvious problem here. Something that they're saying happens, that of course doesn't happen in reality. Another failure for the globe, which of course isn't reality. Remember, the source of this river, when I'm stood at the mouth of the river, according to the globe maths, is 2,000 feet below my feet, 78 miles away, essentially 78 miles away, curving and dropping over 2,000 feet. And then think of the mad journey this river has to make to get to me if the earth was a ball. Clearly ridiculous, 
2,000 feet below me, that river has to run uphill. Think about that. That's two London shards stacked on top of each other. Look how tall this building is. Two London shards stacked on top of each other is how far below my feet the source of the river is, supposedly, according to the globe maps, when I'm stood at the mouth of the river. Now this is reality. A level earth with highs and lows, of course the source being up high on a level earth and the mouth of the river being at sea level on a level earth. And it doesn't matter where you are, if I'm at the source at the top or I'm at the mouth of the river, it doesn't matter which way I'm looking, the water is always running in the right direction, I downhill. Of course, it doesn't work on the globe, it only works on the globe if I'm on uh, high on the source. If I'm on the mouth of the river, clearly it doesn't work. But on the level earth, it works both ways. I mean, this is obvious truths anyway. This shouldn't be difficult, this subject shouldn't be difficult. If you don't entertain the, the propaganda, you stick to what is, it's obvious.